you know, that just takes me to this quote that I read that was printed and, and given to you. It was like, if your life's work can be accomplished in your lifetime, you're not thinking big enough. And here you are. That's big thinking. Yeah. I mean, you're just celebrating a birthday, and, you know, most people would be retired by now, but you're not looking at any of that, are you? No, I'll be good on the heart when this yeah. is getting uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fulfillment. Uh, but yes. I, in that paper in 78, I said this is 50 to 100 years. Yes. So we're on schedule. Yeah, right. And we'll have a, probably a release in 9 or 10 years, mm -hmm. but still it'll be very restricted with our Kernza uh, but working with uh, agronomist uh, Levy mm -hmm. Hahn, who is one of our bright young PhD geneticist types, is uh, uh, heading that up. And mm -hmm. we have others working on uh, wheat hybrids and uh, mm -hmm. so several different species. And we're, um, you know, we're actually quite a few different places around the world have taken to this, and uh, science and nature have. Uh, said good about the necessity to have perennials, uh, the National Academy, the Royal Society. So uh, we're getting a little and bit And you've been purchase. talking this for how long? And well, uh, since, uh, since 77. 77. Yeah. And you feel that they're, the world's just kind of catching on? Well, <clears throat> I think what's happened is that uh, the a couple of, well, several things. One, uh, you know, just in my lifetime, uh, the world population has tripled. Which that's, is frightening. That's one. Mm -hmm. that's one. Uh, and, and, well, since John F. Kennedy, it's doubled. Uh, so we have the population problem. Now, we've had a green revolution, and several of the people that I was in graduate school with went off to help make that green revolution. But that is really predicated upon non-renewables, uh, fossil fuel, natural gas, uh, to run the Haber-Bosch process to make anhydrous ammonia. Mm -hmm. It's the feedstock, and uh, then the fossil fuel dependency for traction. Uh, the farm that I grew up on uh, did not, the, the traction was draft animals, and uh, also, well, we got tractors actually pretty soon, but when I was born onto that farm, and, and my first memory is with the draft animals, uh, and uh, we were, you know, using manure, uh, so there was the right. cycling of nutrients. We Absolutely. didn't have anhydrous ammonia. Uh, at the time. So this tremendous transition that mm -hmm. came within a short period of time, fertilizer, pesticides, mm -hmm. fossil fuel dependent, this is a blip and uh, we're now seeing... Uh, now explain that a little more. This is a blip. Yeah, this fossil fuel these. epoch. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It isn't a fossil fuel epoch, it's a fossil fuel interlude. Interlude, yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean it's, uh, and it's going to have to go, uh, well it will go. Eventually uh, run out. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. run out. Right. Well, it'll get so it's too expensive to pump, mm -hmm. and uh, and we'll. My worry is we'll do an awful lot of desecration mm -hmm. of the with this fracking going on now to get the natural exactly. gas thing, and uh, also I've seen the tar sands area in uh, mm -hmm. in Canada. Uh, I mean, we look if you look at us from the outside, we look like a frantic species that's uh, you know, willing to do anything to get that. Uh, energy rich carbon. So and that's interesting you mentioned like the frantic species because we don't want to give up yeah. the comforts and all the things that we have. Is that what that means well, to you? I or think, I think what does uh, the frantic species I mean, species? I, I, I mean, don't I, want to go all the way back to the Big Bang on this, but <laughs> okay. uh, uh, I will say that all species go after uh, all, all or, uh, animal species mm -hmm. go after energy rich carbon. Mm -hmm. The plant species capture that carbon and make it energy rich uh, using sunlight. Uh, so that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, whether we're bacteria on a petri dish loaded with sugar, uh, we just go for it. We mm -hmm. head for the edge. Uh, whether if we're Drosophila flies, uh, fruit flies within a flask with mashed up banana, that's that source of carbon. They just breed mm -hmm. uh, until the diseases come in. Or uh, humans, until we started uh, agriculture, maybe predators ate us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also, before that, with fire, we killed off the creatures that would want to eat us from the inside, the worms that were in the meat while mm -hmm. we had cooked that. Mm -hmm. 
That's true. Uh, so we've done a very good job at controlling the things that want to eat us. Controlling our predators. Yeah, exactly. Right. Which is why the population has tripled uh, in your lifetime. Yeah. I mean, the fact mm -hmm. that... Uh, Which is a it, crisis. It's becoming... Is it becoming critical? Well, I think it's already critical. We're already I think critical the famines mass. are here. And uh, I think a lot about Garrett Hardin, uh, who wrote 40 years ago, nobody ever dies of overpopulation. Oh, really? Well, you what he meant that. by... No, what he meant by that is we don't... We can't admit mm -hmm. that, say, mm -hmm. what hit Bangladesh mm -hmm. and wiped out, you know, a whole bunch of people... Uh, is the result of too many people. No sensible family would go live in that area if right. there weren't, there wasn't population pressure, and all that's going on in the Middle East. We call it social unrest, political unrest. This, that, and the other. We don't see that there are just too many of us. Too many, and they're fighting for the yeah. basic necessities. Right. Food, water. Yeah. All of and that. Uh, you know, the United Nations says there are 27 million slaves in the world now. And that's more than we've ever had. 27 million 27 slaves. 27 million I've slaves. I've not heard that. What well, are we talking about? Well, Just, I mean, you can uh, imagine how this has happened, especially in mm -hmm. third world places, right. is that somebody has a debt uh, they oh, can't play, right. pay. And, and the uh, next slaves. thing you know, you got more people that owe you, and mm -hmm. you, you don't have that much work to do, mm -hmm. so you sell them mm -hmm. to somebody else that can use them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have a lot of domestic health that's de facto uh, in the category of slavery. It's not slavery in the form, exactly in the form right. that we had in the They're South that we sold. got rid of. Right. But, uh, you know, so there are a lot of things that we just don't want to admit that things uh, are getting worse. And so uh, our idea is that if we can keep ourselves fed, and the soils, I uh, saw something just in the most recent scientific paper, the soils are on a global basis going fast. That's the stuff we're made of. That's that's frightening. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we can get And, and is perennial. the United States one of the richer countries for <coughs> soils? We've got the best soils. I, I, are we number one? We're number one. I mean, thanks to... So where will, will our humanitarianism come into play when the other world, the other countries don't have anything? Well, I, I think that we'll probably be, I we'll uh, hope that we'll be making food available. But mm -hmm. I mean, we were mm -hmm. lucky mm -hmm. as a result of the Pleistocene that scraped the nutrients off the Canadian Shield and deposited them in mm -hmm. Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, and even in Northeast Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're lucky that if you draw a line straight south of Salina, you come to the western edge of the, Medi mm -hmm. of the um, Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we got the precipitation. We've got the rain shadow of the Rockies losing its grip, so we're well watered. We got good soils. Uh, you know, if you go to a place like Australia, it's a poor co continent. It's going to stay poor. It's less geologic activity. You know, 65 million years ago. So, mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. God for the Pleistocene. Yes, that, yes. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness we live here. <laughs> yeah. And this is so interesting, Wes. It's obvious he's quite the intellect and has a wealth of knowledge and information. You're listening to the Joan Yurkovich Show, 910 KINA, and we're going to take a little break and get right back with our most famous Salinan, Wes Jackson.